we're live. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. I'm 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 Kevin. Uh, hello, hello. And uh, I'm waving at the camera. It's not even on. I'm a dickhead. Joining me, it's uh, Dr. Chris Winters. Oh, you like Kev? Oh, you like Savoy? Yes, but it's not just me tonight. It's not. Well, it's a man who claims to be an atheist and yet is dressed like God. Checkmate, liberals. At least I exist. True. <laughs> Better than God. Say hello to everyone to Dusty Smith and uh, cats. Lots of cats. Yeah, we have a little animal sanctuary here, so it's always a circus. But it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Going to fit in perfectly on the happy hour. Yeah, although people might just focus on the cats now for the entire oh, yeah. time. Two cats up there already. You got <laughs> Christy Winter's cats and uh, Kevin's cat over there. That's cute. What's your cat's name, Kevin? My cat's name is Rory. He's a ginger, Rory. A ginger ninja. A ginger ninja. All right. Cute boy. Give us some scratches for me. Will do. Will do. <laughs> How are you, Dusto? I'm amazing, as always. Everything is going superbly for me at the moment of my life, so I can't complain. Awesome. You're on Twitch now. Uh, I'm sort of on Twitch, not that okay, popular. Us, I'm trying to build it up, but yeah, tell us a bit about your Twitch channel. What's it called? And uh, it's just twitch.tv front slash Dusty Smith. I play games on there every once in a while, but eventually I'm probably gonna have to move my show over to Twitch because uh, YouTube keeps banning me for spreading medical misinformation. When obviously I would never ever right. spread medical misinformation. It's just YouTube is run by bots now. And they don't actually have real humans that actually look at anything anymore. So eventually they're probably gonna permanently ban me off there. So I'm going to have to move to Twitch, but for now, it's just silly gaming and stuff. We're going to play some uh, New World when it comes out next month. So that'd be cool. Nice. And of course, you know, with the Twitch thing, if you want to stream your own stuff and then t take your censored stuff and repost it to YouTube yeah, and that's leave true. out the COVID stuff, you know, you can do that too. So It's yeah, so it much of a part of my show now, though, so it's hard to, that's like half my show is covering all the COVID bullshit. And there is so much of it. Who, I mean, I, I didn't realize that there people had such depth of stupidity to the point of killing themselves. Endless supply of it. They're on their deathbeds and they're like, it's fake. Yeah, I yeah, saw well, that guy. I, well, I saw the most American headline I've ever seen for anything ever uh, the other day related to this. Hang on, I'm just scrolling through my bookmarks to find the motherfucker. Uh, is it the one about the what one's 13 year old son? Our 13 year old son died of COVID and she said, I would do anything to get him back except for get vaccinated. No, no, it was uh, this one I'm showing to everyone. Uh, gunshot victims left waiting as horse dewormer overdoses overwhelm Oklahoma hospitals. Oh my God. Yeah, I read that yeah. Rachel Maddow uh, retweeted that. There's something about that article I think that turned out to be untrue though. So. Oh, okay. Wow. One of the one of the doctors who claimed that he worked in the uh, ER hasn't worked there for like two months, and the hospital released a uh, press release saying they had no overdoses of ivermectin or anything, and it was kind of a, a false story. So I'm not really sure how oh. much of that's true. No, it's good to we always like fact checking. Yeah, so. yeah, I'm always fact checking because yeah. I don't want to be like the right. The right doesn't exactly. give a shit. They're rewarded for lying, and I don't want to be like that. I want to put out you know correct information. I feel guilty when I spread bullshit. Yeah, I know. We were corrected by our chats. Not too often, but uh, if we, you know, like, they will catch us on shit. I but but, but uh, don't, don't trust Dusty. He doesn't even believe the correct the correct thing that the Earth is 6,000 years old. So. <laughs> and flat. Oh, it's definitely <laughs> at least 10,000 to 11,000. So, uh, well, there we not go. Not six, though. No, not six. Heathen. Heathen. <laughs> I'm actually wearing my uh, Ain't No Planet X coming because Ain't Not Space because Ain't Not Globe Earth. From internet uh, connect, com, com, comment etiquette. You fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah, flat earthers. I know a little bit about Planet X. That's when I was back in the conspiracy theories. They used to talk about all that stuff. David Icke, and it's coming any second now. Planet X. Is that the, is that similar to Nibiru? That one. I uh, I think it is similar to yeah. Nibiru. Yes. Yeah. The planet that definitely doesn't exist is not real. It's obviously not fucking real. <laughs> Nonsense. Oh, ye of little faith. Hang on. Oh, go away, ad blocker. Fucking. Oh. Okay. We're back to continue. No, it won't let me. Thank you for showing me that link. Though I can't see it, everyone. Apologies. Anyway, so Dusty, yes. Um, yeah. What What have you been covering on your show of late? I know you're into oh, like Q I stuff. We did up. have. We had a question, a kind of a powdered, powdered pastry question that you mentioned in your oh, show. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Thought you wanted to maybe relate the story of. Um, your close encounter with a donut? Yeah, so I don't know why this is a thing, but about 
I guess 10 years ago, uh, somebody went on uh, one of those internet websites and uh, Urban Dictionary, I think is what it is. And they made the definition of the word Dusty Smith is when you put a powdered donut on your penis and you have sex with a woman and then you get her to eat the rest of the powdered donut. I, I didn't do that. I don't know why. I don't know if it's named after me or not. It's stupid. But, uh, yeah, I went to Walmart yesterday or day four, whatever it was, and uh, I have a little shitty 25-year-old convertible. And I used to put the top up. I didn't put the top up this time. And I came back out and uh, put my groceries up, cranked the car, and reached down to put it in drive. And I jumped back. There was something right in the center of my shifter. And somebody had put a powder donut right on the center of my shifter. I have no idea why. I don't know if it's somebody that knows about that meme. Or the donut I, fairy. Might have been the donut fair. I didn't eat it, so that's <laughs> nasty. I guess some birds got to eat some donuts, but um, weird. But it's a harmless prank, so what you gonna do? Ah, uh, your cat nearly fell off the back. That was funny. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. They're, they're endlessly entertaining. But Kevin has uh, something similar. Well, I do, yes. Well, because this reminded me of, uh, I'm from a place called Birmingham, or Birmingham, if you're wrong, and thus American on the thing. Um, well, and there's... Well, there's one called uh, the Birmingham Booty Call on Urban Dictionary. And this, I think, similarly to your one, is uh, probably something that's never actually happened, is what I would think. Because um, for a start, with, with the Dusty Smith, if, if you're fucking so gently that that, that donut is not going to get absolutely destroyed, I don't think you're doing it right. Uh, uh, immediately. Isn't donut holes small? Like powder donut holes? Aren't they just real small, too? I don't know. They're also never, very malleable. Never, never tried it. They'd be very snug if you... Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it someday. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, the Birmingham booty call is ju just every bit of this is stupid. <clears throat> Quote Put your woman's cell phone on vibrate. Okay, well, this is a good start. Stick it up her ass. Naturally. As you're having sex, call her phone, have her shit it out, oh, God. answer it, and talk dirty to you oh, as you come oh, on her God. face. All of that's just disgusting. First off, that seems very uncomfortable. I don't know. I don't think of would a cell phone fit in your ass? Well I guess yeah. some people some people's maybe. Not mine. Well not just that, but like uh, right, there, there's the practicality. You're gonna have to clean that phone afterwards very carefully, yeah, right? No, throw it throw it away. Or do you keep a special ass based phone? Just That's in case. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Break out the ass phone. Then you yeah. have to have like a cellular plan for your ass phone pay every month. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, because well, you don't want to get halfway through and think, "Oh fuck, I didn't put the SIM card in." Shit. Oh no. Literally shit. Yeah, exactly. I have to shit it out and then put it back in. Okay. And by the time the moment's gone, you're not into it anymore. It's a nightmare. Yeah. This is so hot. People this have is. Too much time on their hands in the <laughs> yeah, people like I think Christy said it right. Like incels make up dumb shit like that. Mm -hmm. People who yeah. have no actual practical knowledge of any of it. Anyway. Yep, I heard that. Oh, God damn it. So, yes, what, what, how have you been... Uh, what, what's your take been on the Joseph Robinette Biden presidency thus far, Destiny? I yeah, mean... Destiny, uh, Dest oh, Dusty, I think you said Destiny for a second. Destiny! Like, <laughs> new and approved Destiny, no. Uh, you know, some of the things he does annoys me. His takes on marijuana and whatnot. But, uh, honestly, he's done a pretty good job, I think, overall. I mean, it's a real low bar, you know. We had historically bad for the last four years, you know, so uh, anything is going to be a, a breath of fresh air. So he did actually have the guts to pull out of Afghanistan. You know, if you read Trump's press secretary, it was a ruse. He never intended to actually pull all the troops out of Afghanistan. But Biden actually had the guts. He actually did it. And he's taking the heat for it. So, like, I respect him for that. I think it's unfair for people to continuously shit on him and call him Alzheimer's and say he's uh, mentally feeble, which... Doesn't appear to me is at all. You know, it seems like he's way more cognitively there than Trump ever was. So I, I'm he's growing on me. You know, I still have a few problems here and there, but he's not uh, he's not the worst. I was muted. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go on, Krista. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, you know, as you say, after Trump, anything would be a, a fresh a breath air, someone who can complete a sentence. Would exactly. be a breath of fresh air, but he's been surprisingly left. I mean, um, he backed the union in that didn't the vote that didn't go through, which he didn't have to do, and he did it anyway. And as you said, 
he was frustrated, I think, that Obama hadn't pulled out of Afghanistan or done more on that. And you're right, he is taking the heat for that. And it's early in his presidency, and people are already forgetting it because of the SCOTUS decision. In two more weeks, it'll be gone from the headlines. Um, but he's also, like, you know, with the Democrats in Congress, with the razor thin margin, um, you know, they've still managed to put a lot of money into people's pockets. That's making a real difference. So. It, it just feels like the country is going in the right direction. Like people are, and hopefully things are getting better for people even in these bad times. And yet his approval rating is at an all time low. That's how stupid this country is. Everybody wanted to pull out Afghanistan. He actually does that and they hate him for it. That's We're just su such idiots. It's a trash country, unfortunately. Americans wanted to be out, but they didn't want to lose. Mm hmm. But you know, but I, I want chocolate, but I don't want to gain weight. Yeah, but you already lost like 10 years ago. You just haven't yeah, accepted exactly. it. Yeah. yeah, lost like um, 20 years ago. Immediately lost, lost the day we went in. Have you guys, has Britain really ever, uh, in, you know, from the empire, losing the empire ever uh, kind of gotten over that? No. Exactly. No, no, no. Do I, I mean, Brexit is a direct result of that shit. It's literally thinking we're something better than we actually are and never getting they past the fact that. More than we need them. Yeah, yeah exactly. A lot of regret there. A lot of people are upset that they voted for that now, aren't they? They the, got fooled by all the chuds online and thinking it was on their own, in their own best interest, but they always get conned into voting against their own best interest. True. But unfortunately, much like the Q people, a lot of them aren't accepting it. They're just going to blindly follow it to the end. It's sunk cost fallacy, I guess. They've already put too much effort into defending it and pretending like they were correct, and they can never let their ego take that hit to admit they're wrong. Well, what they do is they do a sidestep. This isn't the Brexit we voted for. You didn't vote for a Brexit. You voted for the idea of Brexit, and this is what you got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like real capitalism has never been tried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heard that one before. Yeah. Um, well, we have an important question in the chat. How many cats do you have? We have nine cats here at the Human Society of Mississippi Animal Sanctuary, and uh, they're all fat and happy. People send in like awesome. gifts. So I have an Amazon wish list for my animal sanctuary, and people always send in like lots of treats and stuff for them, and lots of kitty drugs, lots of catnip. So they're always high as shit and fat. So uh, they're doing well. <laughs> and being very cat, they want they want to be in the room with you, but they don't want to necessarily be on you. You know. Well, I got one room. on me actually right here. Okay. <laughs> so see this little tail here it keeps raising his ass up. I don't want to have anal sex with you, cat. L lower your ass. Yeah, Dusty, put your phone away. Put your phone away. I know, right? I have to call my ass phone any second now. <laughs> yes. Oh, someone asked um, about your opinions on Kamala Harris's trip to Vietnam. I didn't even know she'd been to Vietnam. Okay. Yeah, I, I took some shit for that. I'm not a fan of uh, John McCain or the war in Vietnam. You know, everybody's like, hey, we just fought in orders. That's what they said at Nuremberg. I don't give a shit. They were bombing civilian targets, John McCain. I think that dude was always a warmonger, never a fan, but hey. No, well, I do. I mean, on this show, when when he died, uh, Christy was a bit, um, she stayed a bit quiet on the subject, but I, uh, I I think I called it comrade cancer or something. <laughs> what <point? laughs> Yeah, there are times that, uh, Kevin, I'll just let him kind of like go <laughs> on that limb. Yeah. And see if anyone saws it off. No, fuck it. He's been resulted in the, his policies have resulted in the deaths of fucking hundreds of thousands of people. No, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying, like it was like the day of or the day after, and people were yes, it was just like a my, yeah. So anyway, exactly. I, I, it's I, not well. Look, like, I just go quiet. I just like you know, this good. is a Kevin thing. Yeah, yeah. True, but Christy, you had that reaction when I did a JFK joke. That was fifty fucking <laughs> years ago. What's what's too soon? Hmm? Now you're lying. No, he's just uh, exaggerating for a fact. Fuck's sake. Anyway. Uh, well, we, yeah. we did brainstorm some other shit. Oh, yeah, shoe on head. Um, I did like Yay. your coverage of that. You went. We covered just the surface part of it. But maybe for our viewers, if you want to talk a little bit more about that organization and some of the pr people she's friends with. Well, you you say that, Christy, but on yesterday's stream, I covered uh, Vosh's hour-long simp fest on her, so I, I you speak oh, for yourself. God. Did he do an hour long set fest on her? Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah. I did see him. Um, I, I'm, I've got really mixed feelings about that. He's going to do a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood. I'm like, but you said that people who voted for Warren only did it because they wanted pussy lips on seats. Oh, so, God. you know, <laughs> fuck you, Vosh. <laughs> but yeah. also give money to Planned Parenthood. So I'm really torn on that one. 
Uh, yeah, he has a lot of bad, edgy takes, but at the same time, like, I do agree with most of the things he says, even though I disagree with a lot of his takes and a lot of his simping for shoe and stuff. So, I wouldn't consider him my enemy or anything. I think that you know, it, there's a lot bigger fish to fry that attack Vault and whatnot. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and he and like honestly, a lot of those people he's educating need to be educated more left wise, and I don't have the patience to educate his audience. A lot of them just annoy the shit out of me. So I'm like, oh, I'm glad that he exists to mess with those people. So yeah, I don't have to. Them off when they become more sophisticated, then they come over to your channel and they get like higher level analysis. Yeah. And things. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know, but, fun. Not, not a much higher level, but slightly less edgy. I'm not, you know, I, I got over my whole edge lord days. So you get a slightly less edgy take on things, but I'm still a clown, a goofball. And everything, yes. so it's not, yeah. it's not that highbrow. Well, that we don't go for highbrow on this channel. That's for sure. Well, no, not when you lead with Birmingham booty call. No, that is true. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, indeed, yes. Um, yeah, it's sponsored by Dusty Smith, the the sexual act rather than the person. The sexual act. Sex. <laughs> yeah, even, even better. You gotta you gotta clarify. I don't want people to and, think. And Dunkin' that, Donuts. Right. And Dunkin' Donuts. You get twenty percent off powdered, if you ask for a Dusty Smith. Smith. <laughs> get thrown out, probably. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so the the shoe thing it was the thing we were gonna discuss. <laughs> what were your takes on uh, on yeah. shoe joining a kind of weird Nazi? group or whatever yeah well it seemed to be a front for the uh new york city young republicans organization all the members of this this newer it's called the new york state populist league is the one she joined but it's basically just a front organization for a yeah. republican group but, you know for, for whatever reason she seems to gravitate in her personal life in her real life not not necessarily online but in the real people she hangs out with for some reason she seems to gravitate towards right wingers and that's what history seems to suggest with this new group she befriended, Lauren Southern and Blair White. What's that? Doesn't she come from a lot of money? I, I've heard things, but I don't know enough about her personal okay. life to really comment. I just think one of those circles that she moves in, you know, basically Republican circles, which explains yeah, her. Well, well, that would make sense. sense. Yeah, you're much more likely to be conservative if you're rich mm -hmm. because you know you don't want to pay an extra dollar in taxes or your first year anyway. So yeah, sorry to interrupt, but I just uh, oh no, I will jump in. We're talking about shoe on head. It's not, <laughs> not too serious. <laughs> it didn't break your train of thought. It didn't but break my train of thought. Yeah, yes. So the but Nazis, yeah, populists. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I guess you could call them Nazis. I don't know if I it go. Maybe. They did retweet on their or repost on their Facebook something from, uh, uh, what is it? Abolish Judah. It's not, that's not what it is. But uh, it, it's a term that basically means kill all Jews. Perish Judah. That's what it is. Um, but they did delete it. And uh, the guy who is their youth coordinator outreach person is a full-on Trump supporter, anti-vax. And this group is anti-vax mandate. But, I mean, if you have also people that are running your youth outreach group who are anti-vaxxers, then that pretty much makes you an anti-vaxxer, too. Um, the guy who, while you was the social media coordinator of this organization, the one they were heavily pushing to be the mayor of New, uh, yeah, the mayor of New York City, uh, is that guy who started the uh, Guardian Angels who was incredibly known to be an anti-Semite. And I posted, oh God, I showed videos God. about his racist rants and his yeah. all lives matter. And he's offended about black lives matter. So, you know, when she put this organization who was pushing that guy as the mayor of New York on her 500,000 follower Twitter account. So she was throwing her name, her platform, her brand behind this organization who was pushing this right wing racist shithead. So, you know, it's typical shoe stuff, though. I don't for one second think that shoe knew anything about this, knows anything about any of this. She just doesn't give a shit because it doesn't affect her. Now, she's a well-to-do white girl, and none of this, none, none of pushing racist kind of candidates or right-wing policies that are going to hurt minorities, women, trans people. It doesn't really affect her that much being a wealthy white woman. And she's even said that to me before when we were talking about uh, Joe Biden. I was telling her, well, you, you know, you have this giant platform. We have to get Trump out of there. You have to push Joe Biden. She said, I might vote for Joe Biden, but I'm not going to like push for him very hard because ultimately it doesn't affect me. That's what she told me. And I was like, okay, that's exactly <laughs> right. It doesn't affect you. So you don't give a shit, but it affects a lot of other people. And that's the fucking point. And of course, a thousand people agree with her and shit on me for telling her that. Because that's how it always works. It's a popularity contest online, which is fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that doesn't matter. But I mean, it's typical. She she doesn't take any responsibility for a platform. And her when she came out and she said uh, she answered to all the outrage. She said, "I don't even know why you guys are outraged. Know that I'm pushing uh, fascism and right wing candidates and stuff. I, this is no big deal." But you know, 
I'm sure it's no big deal to you because it doesn't affect you, but it affects other people, and that's the problem. Yeah, on that, just her defense of it was, I mean, um, don't blame me because I was irresp ir irresponsible enough to not look into this. Yeah. What they do is they accuse anybody of any kind of fair criticism of her of having shoe derangement syndrome, which you might know that they got that from Trump. She actually did this herself multiple times during the Trump presidency. She would dismiss any completely justified criticism of Trump by saying it's just you people having Trump derangement syndrome. So now they've retaken that conservative talking point and using it to uh, dismiss any criticism of her. Bosch does this all the time too, calls it shoe derangement syndrome. It's real, mm -hmm. real fucking cringe and it's cheesy and it's sort of insulting to any thinking person to just dismiss criticism by pretending that people are, oh, you're just deranged. But no, I mean, it's valid criticism and she's got- Is that me, me to have sort of like- uh, appeal to motive fantasy uh, uh, fallacy maybe I'm trying to think what kind of logical fallacy that would be or if it would need its own category gaslighting i guess is yeah, what it yeah, is Friday. just dismiss it sweep it under the rug that's what they always do with her you know i, I saw that lance from the surfs is coming out with a new documentary next month about gamergate and he was mentioning everybody who built their career off gamergate and he's mentioning people that didn't even have anything to do with gamergate saying that they built their career off of it yet he didn't mention Shu who literally is one of the main people who started Gamergate, who was, her videos were getting seen very, very little, and still she started making Gamergate videos. That's what blew her channel up. Uh, her uh, attacks on Zoe Quinn directly led to the harassment of Zoe Quinn. He has Zoe Quinn on this documentary talking about her harassment, yet it doesn't appear he's, he mentioned Shu at all because how, they're friends. How could he not have that without having her do that song? Like, what is that? She's wearing the blue wig. If, if it ends up doing that and doesn't have her in there, then I'm gonna make a video calling him dishonest because that is incredibly dishonest to make a video about Gamergate and leave your friends out of it. it, it just, yeah, that point, I, as it a, becomes just ridiculous. As a person who was uh, heavily involved in anti-Gamergate uh, back in the day, I, I will absolutely, um, I will take a look at that. And if he doesn't mention that, I'll have to call that out because that's bollocks. Yeah, that's that's nonsense. And he had a lot of other YouTubers appear in the video like Vadim and Sean and everything. and. Uh, I said, hey, like, I've been covering Gamergate forever. I'm one of the old school YouTube people that's been covering Gamergate for years. I'd be happy to appear in this documentary. Crickets. <laughs> no no message back for me. So, uh, yeah, don't hold your breath for me being again that. I'm still kind of blacklisted with that crew because uh, I'm radioactive or whatever. You guys are one of the few people that are actually happy on your show and be friendly to me, strangely. Yeah, because you got good takes. I mean, that's what we judge. Uh, I, I appreciate it, but uh, yeah, yeah, most mostly it's about clout chasing. People want the views, the money, much more than actual truth. Having yeah, truth and morals. So it's sad. It's kind of, it, it, and that's the way it is on the left now too. You know, it just became another extension of what the anti sgw community was, and it's better. It's way better than it was. So I give them credit, but it's still a lot of the same bullshit that was so toxic about the anti sgw community still exists in this new bread tube leftist community. Yeah, I think that there are sort of like clicks of overlapping audiences that seem familiar with other similar internet issues. Yeah, it just have... shifted. A lot of these people just shift with the popularity. When the anti HW stuff becoming less popular and the leftism sort of ro rose, they just, you know, they jump ship. That's what people do. It's pretty, you know, it's... Well, that's... Yeah, it's hard now because anti-CRT is like the new thing and they're not really calibrated for that. That's the new hot take. True, know? but that's yeah. more like an IDW thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, mostly. I would hopefully defending CRT from would be mm. the new niche market on the left. Is, well, hopefully so, yeah. All kinds of attention to. But that's the thing with, with Shu, though, is that's sort of my theory of going with it, is that she doesn't really have any underlying political beliefs. It's just things were cool. It was cool to be on the alt-right, so she was friends with Lauren Southern. And then it was sort of vaguely cool to be on the left. And now, yeah. I don't know, maybe because there's a more center or left or whatever you want to call it person in the white house and all of that that she's going to drift back to the right again or something because she's like a contrarian at heart i think she is a populist i think that is and because she's more populist than let's say left or right she can kind of like be anti-mandates and for mandating health care for everybody well um, that, but that's the thing know. fundamentally fucking populism especially right-wing populism is nonsense I don't know how yeah, you can be yeah. for uh, a massive military, but for small government. I don't know how you can be for 
tax cuts for the rich and yet for the working class. That just, These things are completely opposite to one another. I, well, I guess low taxes are great when you're... Sorry, Justia. But low taxes are great when you're already a white, benefiting from white privilege and all of the inherited wealth that gets passed down because... Of no, but that's... Well, that, exactly, that's my point, yeah. If you're for the massive tax cuts Trump will give to rich people, but fuck over everyone else, be they white or black or Hispanic or whatever, um, that's you're not really doing populism, you're just doing weird reactionary nonsense also she's like she's really anti-fucking immigration and stuff like fuck that noise yeah i don't think she's intelligent enough to actually have any valid opinions on politics i think she just reads 4chan every day and just repeats whatever the buzzword she reads on 4chan and that's about the extent of her uh political knowledge she just you know just she, i don't think she's a very intelligent person <laughs> it's just yeah Maybe. It's just sad that this is what society makes popular, but it's not surprising, you know. And Trump is president, the Kardashians are billionaires. It's a trash ass world. I think she could be if she put her mind to it, but I don't think she cares enough about it. Like, she's just kind of getting by doing what she's doing, and she's not going to yeah. do more work than that. Yeah, like I said, if it doesn't affect her, she doesn't yeah. care. It's kind of a narcissistic personality disorder. But this is, I mean, my, my problem is, and it's, I think it's a similar problem to the likes of Jimmy Dore or whatever, is that. Uh, during the four years of Trump, there was so much material to go after, it would be almost impossible if you were in political circles to not criticise him pretty fucking regularly, just because even if you were a conservative, he did loads of shit that was like anti-conservative, like uh, fucking trade wars and stuff. Uh, but yet, on her channel, how many anti-Trump videos did she ever do? Two? Two. But she did, she did, well, yeah, and she did two anti Christy Winters videos. <laughs> That's, they're that's equal, true. pretty much the same. So, 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 Christy Winters, uh, you know, yep. American political scientist, as bad as the most powerful uh, man ants. in the world. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. What, you were the final boss of the wine ants, which is nice. <laughs> so you were as big a threat as Donald John Trump. <laughs> brilliant, fucking brilliant. But I'm gonna take your title. I can drink me some box wine. You don't even want to go there with me, Doctor Christy Winters. <laughs> that sounds good. What is that? Um, like white or red? Red, chillable red is what I drink. But I make a, I make wine spritzers, so I'm, I'm you people, you people are so American. You instantly you went to box wine. You, you people are fucking animals. Box wine's delicious, man. Don't even hate on no goddamn. We're gonna have a fight if we hate on box wine now. That's my shit. I don't know. It's people, cheap, it's good. It gets you fucked up. What's not to love? <laughs> uh, well, the savagery of it is is the point. I think the, the lack well, of civilization. Yeah. We're Americans. That's what we do. Glass bottles exist. I'm just saying. Come on now. But they're heavy when you have to buy them in the quantities. Oh yeah, but that's no, like saying, oh, when you, when you can just piss your pants. No, put your pants down. Go to the toilet like a normal person. Have you lifted a gallon jug of wine? That's heavy in the glass. A gallon bottle? jug of what? You people are monsters. Get, get, get the drunk off a bottle. What kind of lightweight well, are buy you? Buy two bottles. Buy three what? bottles. How whatever. Do you get drunk off two bottles. Oh, <laughs> you need a no. box. A big ass box. Just full to the brim of wine, dude. Come on. <laughs> so, and this is this is why the world. This is why we can't have nice things. And then, Kevin, have you ever okay. drunk bugs wine before? Uh, once, and I got very drunk, which was the okay. the point of it, I suppose. But it's just it's it's the lack of civilization, Krista. Well, what you don't know is that you know at the end of the night, when gravity is not doing enough work, you got to crack open the box and you got to push the bag that's holding the wine. Got to squeeze down. the bag, squeeze that, squeeze every last drop out oh, of the bag. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> You've got a colostomy bag, that shit. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> This is, I mean, again, this is this is the the country that's running the world right now, people. I'm just saying. America, hell yeah, fuck yeah. All of a sudden, the election of Don, uh, Donald Trump doesn't sound like so crazy anymore. Um, it makes sense. Wait till he gets reelected in 2024. Oh God. Well, let's. What What do you think genuinely are the chances of that? Because he's bound to try and run again, assuming yeah, he doesn't God. die. But uh, you know. unless they convict him of a felony, I would say he has a great chance of winning again. Unfortunately, but. But only because we live in a country where you can win as a minority, you know. You can get a minority of the votes mm -hmm. and still win because of the Electoral College, so... Well, and gerrymandering. And gerrymandering, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it yeah. sucks. And hey, terrifying. Hey, I have a question for Dusty. All right. Because the last four or five years have been, for me, waking up to the actual extent of white supremacy, I compare it to leaving religion. Like, the whole, I can't believe I bought into this shit 
I finally see the reality. How did I not see this before? Um, all of that kind of thing. Because I grew up in Wisconsin, rural Wisconsin, white, white area. And Re I didn't really have any... fucking white. So yeah. white. I never really had counter evidence to the idea that everything I was taught in schools was true. And so, I mean, I kind of got as I grew, obviously, you become more aware of the problems, but it felt very distant or it felt like a colorblind solution, hey, or a liberal, oh, we've passed the Civil Rights Act and we have discrimination laws and things are getting better, you know. Um, and so I was just wondering, from your background, did you ever buy into the bullshit or did you always know that there was sort of a disconnect between what was taught to you or and what was what you saw around you or what you lived? Well, as a black man living in Mississippi, I didn't experience much racism. So, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I grew up in an incredibly racist society, of course, growing up in Mississippi. And uh, I was, it was just normal to be racist when I was growing up. It was normal to say the N word. It was normal to call black people, you know, the N word behind their backs. Didn't say to their face, but behind their backs. Like, it was just, you know, part of the culture you're raised in. And you don't even really think about it because everybody's doing the same exact thing. And, and then, yeah, you get older and you realize, oh my God, everybody is just disgusting pieces of shit. And uh, there's a lot of connection with that and religion. You know, racism and religion has always gone mm -hmm. hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it actually took me a long time to realize, oh, God, you know, white privilege is actually a real thing, which just seems insane. How can you not know? How can you live in a society that's specifically designed for you and have such an easy ass life directly connected to your white privilege and yet not know? It's like it's the same way how uh, I'm only like five, seven and a half. And I never realized I was short until I was like 30 and somebody pointed it out. You just have these cognitive biases, these mental blocks, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you just don't see it until you, you have to push back, you know, your uh, biases basically and try to uh, confront your own ignorance. And then it's like, a, like you said, it's like finding out religion is not real. It's like an aha moment. It's like, oh shit. Yeah. And then you start, I, then I start feeling like guilty because not only have I benefited from the system, I've mm -hmm. contributed to the system. Yep. And you're like, oh, well, what, what do I do? <laughs> How do I fix this? And you really can't fix it. All you can do is try to better yourself and be better and recognize this, the problem and what the system is and try to dismantle the system. And it's up to you. It's up to those of us who have the privilege to dismantle the system. You can't, Absolutely. You can't depend on the people who are actually being oppressed by the system to change the system. It's up for those who are mostly in power to do it. So, uh, well, Absolutely. But on an interesting kind of allied note, did, did, did we see the clip, the surface clip of um, Larry Elder, the guy who is very possibly going to become governor of California, maybe? Um, oh, God. I hope hang on. I'll, I'll have to... Um, uh, I'll pull it up. Yeah, I'll share this with everyone. Before you play that, I just want to say, it's interesting because um, I didn't grow up with racism. I grew up with like the benign Midwest nice, which I guess in some ways allowed me to believe the lie more easily because I didn't see it. You know, the, like the, you know, the 1960s were the time of the problems and now everything is, you know, like individual post-racial. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's just like two different perspectives, but I wonder in some ways, yeah, like the, the benign racism is is harder it, it's just yeah it's a different kind of uh of... harder to see through harder to yeah. overcome probably yeah because you think you're being a good person and just being a good person is enough mm -hmm. i'm a good person i'm not a racist and you think that that's where it ends well even growing up saying the n-word and everything i still didn't think i was a racist that's the that's the thing racist people don't believe they're racist you know they think they're still the good guys like i have a black friend when my when my friends in school was black how could I possibly be racist? That's the way their mind works. It allows you to justify anything to yourself. Mm -hmm. Make yourself feel better because, you know, no one wants to think they're the baddies. You know, even the Germans, <laughs> the Nazis thought they were the good guys, right? Yeah. Just to clarify to uh, 8DX in the chat, what I meant was, whereas Dusty's experience was, was um, manifest racial slurs and racism, um, when I said I didn't grow up with racism, I don't remember people using the N-word around me. Like, that was just the values of my family. Now, maybe they did it, I don't know, like, not when I was around, but I don't know why. But so I, I didn't really have that experience of, of that Dusty hat or Steve Shives either. Of, um, and so that's what I mean is that I didn't see the racism because, like, in my white bubble, it wasn't manifest, right? So in that way, it was even harder to you know, get, beyond, yeah, get beyond that. All right, that was it. Just wanted to clarify. And thanks, Dusty. 
No problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Larry Elder, the guy who, like I say, if there's a recall and stuff, he might become governor of, of uh, California, the fifth largest economy on Earth. I Good hope this sinks them. If they vote for him after this clip, this yeah. clip's already gone viral. Yeah. Then, like, California, what the hell happened? Yeah, did you see this, Krista? No, I have not. But if Candace Owens is involved in taking down a Republican, I am so here for it's this. It's worse than you think. Yeah, it's oh, no. yeah. Whatever you think he's gonna say, it's like it's, it's so worse. shit. It's okay. this is mental. It's right behind them. By the way, when you mentioned that uh, the UK was ahead of us, they were. Do you know that the slave owners were compensated after they lost their quote unquote property? The government compensated slave owners. I didn't know that. Yeah, and so when people talk about repar reparations, do they really want to have that conversation? Because like it or not, slavery was legal. And so their property, their legal property, was taken away from them after the after the Civil War. So uh, you can make an argument that the people that are owed reparations, and not only just black people, but also the people whose, quote, property, close quote, was taken away after after the end of the Civil War. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> and did he just argue for white slavers' reparations? <laughs> did he just say that both sides are deserved? <laughs> Just, oh my god. It's a hell world. Like, you gotta laugh to keep from crying. It's so fucking wild. That's the exact, that's like the dumbest, like, that's the end point of what, like, libertarianism does to your fucking brain. And that's, this is not just some nobody. This is the Republican candidate that's in the lead in California on the Republican side. It's just, mm. this is what they want to elect. That's How do you not just be humiliated wild. constantly to be conservative? Also, bear this in mind, America. Just, just on a practical basis, even if we ignore the horrific morality of it, uh, Britain did recompensate uh, the slave owners. Uh, we finished paying that debt back in 1991. And when was it started? 1860? Uh, no, even before that, 1815, I think, was when we uh, got rid of slavery. 1815? Yeah, so it took, it took nearly 200 years, basically. Like three years after the War of 1812, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's. I mean, and you had. Uh, awesome. You had more slaves. So just you know, just bear that in mind as well. Like, not only is it morally reprehensible, but we financially completely ruin us. Well done. Well done. I trash something. planet. Oh, sorry. go ahead. Trash Disney. No, I'm done. I was gonna say trash planet. Go ahead. Oh yeah, trash. Um, I had never heard of gradualism when it comes to abolition before I started because the PragerU video on slavery pissed me off, so I binged some academic-y things. But were you, have you heard of the phrase gradualism as it relates to abolition uh, in the U.S. history? I'm not familiar with that, no. Yeah, it's, I think it's pretty niche because most people think that anti-slavery activism began with the great, oh fuck, what was that, great revival, great... Um, religious revival that happened in the 1800s but the roots of it actually started with societies in Philadelphia in the late 1700s uh, the last parts of the 1700s um, and gradualism was the idea that um, from a certain day forward every person born into slavery would basically be viewed as an indentured servant the and great awakening Krista yes thank you the great awakening and they would be freed on their 28th birthday and that was seen as a way to kind of both compensate slave owners but also guarantee a path to freedom for enslaved people and that was initially the position of a lot of these societies but then someone ha said hey why don't we just ship them all back to africa and then that became like the thing that divided the movement my salon hello yeah yeah you're, you're okay back. i'm sorry i'm sorry no, sorry. I was looking at the chat over here. I'm sorry. I got uh, distracted by your boxed wine poll over here. I didn't mean to <laughs> not pay attention. I was laughing at that. I just pulled up Twitch. So, hello, pool. everybody on Twitch. Stop oh, it. yeah. People um, post uh, links to Dusty's channel in the yeah, chat. For yeah. People to go yeah. Go and, and go and follow Dusty immediately. Otherwise, I will fucking do stuff that's TOS. So I can't yes. say it. Why they may you have already. Move, why don't you go move, move to Twitch? You should uh, do this on YouTube, right? Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, Twi uh, Twitch pays me. Oh, YouTube didn't pay you? No, you, I got demonetized in the, the uh, Stephen Crowder slash um, oh, uh, yeah. uh, Lispy Queer gate thing. Did, did, did you get like completely demonetized? Yeah, yeah, no. Like, soft demonetized? No, demonetized. No, no, they, they emailed me in the... the what, what's the phrase they use? The um, adpocalypse thing. And they just said, no, you, you, yeah, you, you've been kicked out of the partner program. Because I dared yeah. to take on people like Stephen Crowder. Yeah. And then yeah. he was under review for... You're still under review, aren't No, you? no, they got back to me. It took, I think it was about nine months. 
because of COVID, apparently, to get back to me on, on reapplying. So I just, oh, fuck, they're never going to give me a penny. So, okay, cool. So I'll just go onto Twitch then. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I don't mind. They soft demonetized my channel about seven years ago where they played just about no ads. All the ads you see on my channel are from people that have copyrighted my work and they get the money and I don't. But uh, I do make money off Super Chats. That's how I mostly fund my mm -hmm. show. So that you can't even Super Chat? Nope. Nope. Nah, nothing. That's, no. that's fucked up. That's yeah. rough. Exactly. I, I need reparations. True. Oh, God, the reparations thing. I'm sorry, so anyway, gradualism was an attempt to try to get property owners some compensation while also guaranteeing freedom at the at, by the age of 28 or at the age of 28. Which back so then, which angry. would have just given them the fucking... Um, the, in years. the incentive to like work them to death up to the age of 28 because mm. there's no point like the whole point was you keep them alive because they're valuable but once they start approaching 28 you might as well just kill them yeah just work them to death you use them up at that point yeah exactly yeah because you don't care what they what state they're in after that so that you just have a lunch of a bunch of broken back 28 year old african-americans basically but even from the start it was won't somebody think of the slaveholders it's just that's that's also part of it is like that was always under mm. an undercurrent of this discussion i just thought we left it behind in the 18th 19th century sorry no oh god no look the conservatives will always try and fight back against any progress and if that means they have to like go with some bullshit that you thought was gone 300 years ago like they're trying to re the whole thing about trying to revive classical liberalism that was like 300 years ago stop yeah. just fucking stop but yeah I, I was just thinking about the prison system they just moved it to uh you know for profit prisons these days true yeah give that financial incentive to keep people in prison and then you wonder why you've got the largest prison population mm -hmm. on earth yeah and then work them for pennies on the dollar basic slave labor from that too mm -hmm. true Sure. Yeah, and well, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, given that it's California, the fact that the California wildfires are being like dealt with by essentially prison slave labor, they've got like uh, firefighters who are prisoners doing it. Mm -hmm. The fuck? The, you're the richest the nation that's ever existed. You can't <laughs> afford to actually pay firefighters. What? Jeff Bezos needs a yacht for his yacht. Yeah, but what about that yacht? Does that yacht have a yacht? <laughs> It's like a never-ending Russian doll situation. No, it has a rocket ship that's shaped like a blue dick. That's true. That was the funny... <laughs> like, literally, it's shaped like a cock. It's like Austin Powers came true. <laughs> Beyond parody. Yeah. Absolutely mad. Oh, yeah, talking of PragerU, did we want to watch the PragerU 9-11 video? Oh, God, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Actually, well, then there's just a little bit. Have you been following the Arcadum drama at all, Dusty? No. I'll see if I can find it. I'll send you the clip for after this because um, it's just the first seconds of it. It's a, a, a guy who is a and d really big in the Twitch community, D, uh, DM, was found to be emotionally manipulating um, and sexually harassing, and in one case sexually assaulting, women that he was working with or was friends with. And um, we covered it on our channel in quite in depth, actually. We looked at several of the accounts and things. And, um, you know, your friend um, Infrared, Kev. Yes. Yeah, the, the greatest mind in Christendom. Yes, Tanky. Yeah. Um, who, um, he covered it. And it's just the first, like, first five seconds of his video. Does, he, I to does, he, does he call himself a mongoloid again? No, or, you know, he doesn't call anyone an ang um, ang angloid? No, angloid. Yeah, angloid. An angloid? Yeah. So anyway, go ahead and watch this one. I will find that one and send it to you in the Google chat. Awesome. Okay. Um, so this is not, uh, uh, PragerU, not not uh, happy with just doing shit for adults, shit videos. They've got a kids channel now, right. PragerU Kids. Oh, yeah. We, we looked at the Prague. one on... Oh, well, you want to tell about the last one we watched? The last one was amazing. The last one, Rock. So they, basically, <laughs> it's like a kind of... These kids can time travel or some shit. Anyway. Um, and they went back to 1980, whatever, and they were talking with Ronald Reagan at the Berlin Wall, and it was the funniest thing because the kid in, kind of insinuates that he wants to eat communists. It was so funny. I, I was crying. Anyway, so this one's called uh, Story Time, Otto's Tale. Uh, already a lie here. Today is September the 11th. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's... that be good. This, uh, the, yeah, get ready for some uh, stage four cancer, everyone. Welcome 
Welcome to Otto's Tales, story time brought to you by PragerU Kids. I'm Jill, here with Otto, and today we're reading a book about a very important... That dog is fucking massive. How terrifying is that? That is a human-sized dog. Also, how shit is that costume? That is true. But like all, like all people in costumes, I want to punch the face of the costume. But I know there's a person in there, but I want to punch the costume face. <laughs> That's a you thing, Kevin. It's That's not. It's not at all a me thing. <laughs> don't tell me you don't want to absolutely rugby tackle this motherfucker. Don't even say it. <laughs> it's a lie. ...day that happened in United States history. Now, this is a serious story that was scary for a lot of people, but this story <laughs> also shows us how many heroes there are all around us and how much Americans can love and help each other when we need it. Hey, Otto... Yeah, that's a good that's a good point actually in chat. Is this introducing people to the degeneracy of furries? <laughs> is that what is that what's taking place here? If so, I'm very much here for it. But you know, yeah. and hell, fuck yes. Why don't you get comfy and listen? <laughs> okay, let's read Otto's tales today. <laughs> Is September 11th. Oh, yeah. fucking hell. This is, yeah, Subject this is matter. Right. I'm Otto. Today is September 11th, a tragic day in our nation's history. Is that supposed to be dust, like, from the building? Is that what this visual metaphor is? Not. Oh, no. God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope not. That is, that is poor taste. <laughs> that is poor taste. It's important to never forget what happened that fateful day in 2001. We also remember how the country came together, strong and united, after facing a very sad uh, and hard time. Yep. My best friend well, Dennis no. climbed to the top of the kitchen counter. That's like his hair. This is our big oh. red fire truck, he said. I'm on top of the ladder. It can be our time machine. Are they going to imagine the bodies falling from the buildings as well? No. <laughs> Where is uh, this going? This is a I nightmare. know. This is so weird. Like, why would you turn September 11th into a kid's book? Other than to indoctrinate them, of course. Yeah, exactly. Setting the narrative at an early age. People right? are always bitching about brainwashing children doing the exact yes. same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I barked. There's a lot to learn on our next adventure, Dennis said. Let's roll. Zoom! We traveled back to New York City. A lovely morning, I said. Sure is pretty. A September day, the sky bright blue, lots of people at work what with lots of What the fuck is going on here? What the they're going to... This kid's going to watch 9-11 happen? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. And, and they're going to do it in rhyming couplets. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get ready for um, a 9-11 sonnet. Here we go. Yeah. Center, we plan to spend several hours. There's a spectacular view atop oh, the Twin no. Towers. <laughs> a day like all others. We had nothing to dread. We had a snack in the plaza, and Dennis patted me. I love the happy music in the but background. While we were busy eating and talking, very bad men with an evil plan were plotting. In a few short minutes, our <sighs> world would be changed Fucking by 19 up. terrorists boarding four planes. They hated our country, its people so free. A world without America, God. they wanted to see. Oh, no, Osama they didn't. bin Laden was the bad man in charge. They don't mention that basically what happened on September 11th, the seeds of that were planted with the U.S. funding of the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. They hated our freedom, Christy Winters. It's the only <laughs> reason they did it. They were like over there, mm -hmm. I can't believe they have strip clubs. I yes. can't believe how free these motherfuckers are. Let's just murder them all. Yeah. Well, also, interesting. yeah, also some of the terrorists did actually go to a strip club yeah, and get, know, right? get drunk the night before. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure Al yeah. will just overlook that one, though. Good lad. Um, uh, yeah, the, yeah, Christy, yeah, the reason they didn't go back to that is because what, what they could have done is had a link in from the Ronald Reagan episode where he's like, yeah, we defeated communism. Also, we gave guns and weapons to Osama bin Laden. Whoopsie. Like, yeah. you know, they could have they could have uh, done like a follow on. But Stop what are you going to do? Get some help. Um, yeah, just, just called, pause it. If I'm, sorry, I'm going to do more critique here. They called them evil men who hated our freedoms, right? They didn't say they were Saudi Arabian, they were Saudi Arabian citizens. 
Um, and, you know, it was a very limited group or anything, right? They're just evil men. These are the evil men who hate your freedoms. Whenever you see these men, that is hate. I mean, it is Islamophobic racism just palpable That's, right now. It, absolutely. But what I will say is I'm glad they at least haven't gone with, like, fuel can't melt steel beams. Like, I'm glad they haven't gone there. Do you know what I mean? Can, yeah. Count your blessings, I suppose. We're only two minutes in. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, and also secretly it was the Jews. Like that would be that would be a bit much, I think. Al Qaeda had grown quite large. How? How, to... how did that happen? Who, mm -hmm. who gave them weapons? That was silly, wasn't it? Shouldn't have done that. Whoever that was, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. As we finished our yummy treat, a sound was heard by all on the street. Oh no! Look there, what are you Dennis. doing, Dennis? What's that up in the sky? It was a plane flying low. That should have been high. The plane hit. Oh, down. what the fuck is? What is this? Oh. <laughs> Yikes! Yep. Jesus Christ! Mm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. On a very special break, are you? This is amazing. It's like an after-school special for kids about 9/11, yeah. Yo. <laughs> so I shouldn't laugh at 9/11. I know, but this—they've—they've Hanna Barbera to 9/11. It's absurd. It's just ridiculous. Fuck yeah. me. Ay, ay, ay. Towers in a fiery flash. There was a huge explosion and a very loud crash. We all stood shocked, not knowing what to do. Was America under attack? No one quite knew. And just then, the other tower was hit by plane number two. The first responders that arrived were so brave. They thought only of the people their efforts might White save. Guys. The firemen ran toward the buildings as smoke filled the air. They displayed great courage, a trait very rare. True, they did show a lot of courage. It would be a shame if, say, a Republican president tried to bilk them out of, uh, out of yeah. money to, to try and actually, you know, uh, deal with their health complaints. Mm -hmm. To the point where most of them died before that bill would ever pass Congress. Yeah. I'm just uh, glad none of them got sick. Yeah, exactly, yes. yeah. yeah. No, no respiratory problems going on there, thankfully. Awesome. On my show today, I played the John Stewart clip where he said, you know, this today sums up the problem here is we have a room full of people who've been affected by 9-11 and we're talking to a, a committee that's half empty. Yeah. When it came to that, that bill. Yeah. yeah. There were people helping one another all over the place. Young and old, men and women of every background and race. I like at least. Yeah. yeah. How grateful cop, we were right? for all the good people tried to do. We climbed into our fire truck, waved, and called out, thank you. What the fuck is this little prick doing just <laughs> roaming around 9-11 now? What is going Dennis on? Dennis the hero that we all need. Yeah, exactly. Fire yeah. truck helping everybody as a child. Yeah, with like, little white hair. Yeah, what is... Also... Uh, the dog seems really happy about it, too. Yeah, you know? the, the, dog, yeah the dog is clearly an <laughs> Islamist. Fuck you, dog! 9-11 just happened, all right? This dog is clearly a fucking Islamist. I know. <laughs> We're gonna Terrorist have to. Let's, we need. Why is this? Why is this dog not been fucking drone striked? Is no one would have punched that dog costume. If you ever see like a, a little figure in dressed in orange at Guantanamo Bay, I think we know who that is. So I'm gonna waterboard say. it. Yeah. Auto. On to the White House, Dennis said, and zoom. We found ourselves inside an oval-shaped room. President George W. Bush spoke to the nation that night. Pause. He said. <laughs> They skipped the My Pet Goat part. Yeah, they did. They skipped that bit, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I watched that video too today. Yeah. If he just looked on the gormless. Yeah, him just like, oh shit, they're not telling me what to do. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just sit here and read My Pet Goat whilst the, the worst day in modern American history happens. <laughs> yeah, he had a, what, a 90% approval rating after that? Yeah. Because America? Mm -hmm. America. And it really was. I saw someone showed a clip uh, of Oprah Winfrey doing weird, like fascist shit after nine eleven. That was that was a crazy time. The fucking saturation of weird, like pro war propaganda everywhere. Oh yeah, I mean, Mad. I was in. I lived in Madison, Wisconsin, during the build up to the war, and it was basically the only place in the state having anti war demonstrations where you could have them. Mm. Maybe Milwaukee too a bit, but the rest of the yeah, it was like scary if you were well, war people have just gone in your shit well wisconsin definitely one of the high profile al-qaeda targets i reckon mm. yeah. definitely yeah, i was watching cody shoddy's new video about 9 11 and he was talking about the one i can't remember her name but the black congresswoman the only one that voted against it and uh mm. how much 
racism and death threat she got for being right. Yeah, exactly. For being yeah. a hero and standing up, because that's what our country is. It's just, mm-hmm. but they, it's the same Baptist shit. Look, like, I, I want, I want to sit all America down, and just go look, learn the lessons for next time, okay? When they, <laughs> when they tell you, yeah, we were wrong about the last war, but this one's fine. When they say, no, but seriously, the Iranians, they're, they're the worst threat in the history of mankind. Don't it'll, listen to them. It'll pay for itself. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. China. Got to about China. It'll be over by Christmas, honest. Mm-hmm. Oh, what is hell. what are the Chinese gonna do? Just nothing. It'll be easy. Exactly, two weeks yeah. stops. They'll exactly. lay right down. Fucking Chinese. Yeah, they'll they'll take two inches of land and there'll be a fucking mission accomplished thing. It'll be fine. Yeah, grand. Oh. This is a day when all Americans unite. The terrorists tried to scare us and get us to retreat, but our country is strong. America, they can't defeat. Oh, Dennis God. Chinese. It's so um, tortured. They literally, the they literally yeah. did, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, they literally $8 did. trillion. Dollars <laughs> and we... You just had to leave 20 years later. Yeah, they won. I don't... The mm. fuck. Congra- can we congratulate Terra in winning the war on Terra <laughs> on this one? He's going to do a book about how we really won Vietnam next. True. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the South really won, so it's fine. <laughs> I mean, so technically, they did win the peace, but uh, it's a different matter. Yeah. yeah. And in, we saw so many people today doing good. Americans helping each other in any way they could. In the days that followed, Americans... Well, Ameri- except giving financial aid to people who needed it, or healthcare, or, or anything like that. Yeah. But other than that, true. Hey, Dick Chen and Halliburton, they made a lot of money, so... Shh, they did. That was all as well. Exactly, it was the most radical redistribution of wealth ever. In the completely the wrong direction, but, you know... It's details, minor details, details, you know. American yeah. flags filled the sky. The country came together, and we know the oh reason God, why. Oh, God, let's look at this absolute shite. America is one of the most obnoxiously annoying nations. Look at it. You don't Patriots need that many flags. Born. Stop it. Just, oh. We waved goodbye to President Bush, jumped back in our fire truck, and gave it a push. Zoom, Dennis shouted. To the future we go. God. Driving the fire truck with me in tow. We returned to New York on another 11th of September. The city built the 9-11 memorial to help us remember. The place where the towers once stood is now called Ground Zero. People were there to honor the fallen, both victims and heroes. There was so much at the memorial to learn and to see, like what happened that day at the Pentagon See, this flight. dog's definitely an, an Islamist. He was happy yeah, on nine eleven, but now, now he's sad. He's just had oh, they were more oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I liked it better when they were dying. Shh, I don't remember them. Yeah. Finding the secret subtext of PragerU videos. Exactly. The, the the real story is Otto's uh, issuing a fatwa against America. That's what I want to say. And cannibalist anti-communist. True. Flight ninety three, Dennis. I said. What the terrorists did was wrong. They tried to hurt us, Otto, but America is... Hang on, that's genius. That's genius in the chat. Thank you. The dog insists it was a controlled Dalmatian. <laughs> controlled Dalmatian! Come on it. now! Funny. <laughs> oh, that's, that's... Thank you. You've made my year. Strong. Look, I said, pointing at those two beams of light. Dennis said, that's a shining memorial lit up every year on this night. It's September 11th, Otto. We call it Patriot Day. The tribute and light is an inspiring display. All white people. Yeah. Then we hopped into our fire truck and once again zoom. Sirens blasted. Wee-ow, wee-ow. Back to Dennis's room. That was a very important adventure, I said. Why is that, Otto? Well, I never knew about September 11th and why we must never forget what happened that day. Yes, said Dennis. America was attacked for being strong and free. The terrorists tried to destroy our way of life, but they did not succeed. And Americans came together even stronger after that terrible attack, I said. I don't know. Texas just became Gilead, so I think they kind of did. Well, yeah, free to their idea of freedom, which is telling other people what to do. True. That's right. Also, don't they hate New York? Isn't that coastal elite land? Mm Mm-hmm. I, well, did, well, didn't you have something dusty about they're trying to organize a trucker's strike? Oh yeah, no. 
<laughs> yeah, no more uh, goods to any left-leaning city across the country. So they're going to bankrupt their own companies in order to own the left. Because that's how capitalism works, isn't it? How does capitalism work? It's only the left-leaning cities that like make any things, though, isn't it? Mostly, like the, all of the money comes from like New York yeah. and LA and shit. Like, yeah, all the red states are welfare queens. Yeah. We always we, we couldn't like survive if it wasn't yeah. for the blue states. But like, yeah, let's no, hate them. No offense, Arkansas, but I mean, you don't want to start that fight. You don't open that Pandora's box because that um, won't end well. Nor Mississippi. Mm. Right, said Dennis. Many people acted like heroes that day. Our firefighters, police officers, and first responders displayed the best of America, land of the free and home of the brave. Mm -hmm. We will never forget them, I barked. And we will never forget September 11th. God bless Patriot Day. God bless Patriot Day. <laughs> Where was we God? We will never forget. Yeah. Rough. Yeah, exactly. That motherfucker could have stepped in and like swatted those planes away or some shit. Or just... Yeah. Like, I he don't know. wanted it to happen so we could prove how strong we were. Exactly. Well, it's still my favourite piece of religious nonsense ever when the, the Pope was shot in like the 80s and someone, I can't remember, some polit uh, polit uh, journalist asked about like why didn't God deflect the bullet and the Pope's official like, people responded with God deflected the bullets away from his vital organs. <laughs> so God was okay with you just living in agony for months yeah. and like having perpetual bowel problems, but like he he didn't shoot you in the heart, so be grateful. What the fuck? And then they went out of the Pope Mobile with like ten inches of bulletproof glass. Yeah, because there's his faith in action. True. Oh, so sorry. The end. One more thing. Someone in the chat was asking if Prager U was shown in schools. I did see an article about that, and I've only seen it shown. Um, that I've only seen people talking about it having shown it to debunk it to show basically how it's propaganda um not these stories it would have been like other prager you videos so yeah it's not um maybe in religious schools who knows what the fuck they do in those schools so yeah well no in some of those schools this would be like leftist cuck propaganda <laughs> this isn't nearly white enough it's made by it's made by a jewish man so clearly it's like satanic illuminati or something you know? Didn't mention the Mossad dancing on the van on 9-11, filming the whole thing. True. Now, that was a kind of story we've never read before. What did you think, Otto? I, I thought with... it was enormously inappropriate. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should salute all those police officers, firefighters, emergency responders, and everyone who helped so many on that day. I thought, hang on, but as libertarians, don't you think that public servants are like drains on the public purse? These are not wealth creators, you understand. It's socialism. Exactly. Well, once you bust the unions, Kevin, it'll be fine. But not the police unions, they're good. Because yes. they defend white murderers. <laughs> Fucking hell. Back to blue. What a what a convoluted web of nonsense you have to believe in to be a, like a conservative. Mad. We are thankful to be safe now, and we will never forget September 11th. America America's safe now. We're so safe. It's mm -hmm. the, yeah. I bet it's not like a white supremacy problem or anything. No, not at Dome all. Domestic terrorists or nothing, you know? You don't have to worry about that. No, it's not like you've got like rampant gun violence or anything. It's fine. Well, and if you watch fine. Fox News, you know, you think that there's like a billion people crossing the border. MS-13 literally owns America, Christo. Yes. Don't even start can needs us to keep helping each other and keep protecting our way of life. Remember that no matter what happens, Americans can be strong and make things right together. Right? Right. Thank you for watching Otto's Tales. And fuck Check the rest out some of, the world. of our other stories too. Keep You're reading, wrong, keep kids. learning, America. and always remember our American heroes. God bless all of them, and God bless you. Bye. Fuck off. Thank goodness it's only got 142 views so far. Yeah, that is embarrassing. See, that's yeah. the thing. This is the numbers that Prager you will get if it wasn't all like completely astroturf nonsense. Because mm -hmm. no one that watches this shit. Wildly low. They only had 971 subscribers, and that yeah. video was, you know, bullshit. But the production value was good. Yeah, that's oh, amazing yeah. how much money they must have spent to hire animators and stuff to create that. Just to only get that low number of views is wild. Yeah, not to mention the rhyming couplets of the attack of the, on the Twin Towers, you know. And have writers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's but... true. And I want to go back to that image of the actual thing happening, because it's the most mental. Who who would fucking show this? That's, this is a kid's video. What is this nonsense? 
Look at that. At least that. the dog looked horrified in this one, so that's good. Yeah, because if it's 19 friends that died. And Dennis Prager's point, like, <laughs> nobody's, like, we can't see it for ourselves, Dennis. What the fuck are you pointing at it for? <laughs> it's an explosion, dude. We see it. Also, Doug can't look up. So, that's a fact. It's not a fact. Anyway. Or, or speak, but. Yeah. Well, that, well, that is, yeah, again, that, yeah, nitpicking is what that is. Leftist <laughs> nitpicking. Typical ah, dust. Indeed. Yes. Oh, oh, right. So, all right. And let me, let me just hold a second. Yeah, you had. Did you have Some a video context. you wanted to see? Yeah, I, I put it in the chat already in our Google Hangout chat. Did you? Okay. All right. So this uh, part of so what happened was this guy was pulling this shit for like almost two years, um, and then his he was running around behind his girlfriend's back, telling all of these women that um, they were on a break and all this bullshit. Was she it found lost? out. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You no, know, she found out. And even though he's like building a business and had one of these women like leading the music team, he went, oh, I can't have a personal relationship with any of you now. Bye. I'm blocking you from our discord. I can't interact with you. You're just gone. And he's got like 250,000 Twitch subscribers in this big. So anyway, they talked. And when they talked, they all realized he'd been doing the same shit to them and different ways and different levels. So they they got together in a discord because in the end there were like well a couple other um people posted like his friend but there were like almost 20 accounts that dropped on one day for this arcadum guy right so it was kind of a big deal he was busy he was busy. That was horny as fuck mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like i quit even answering my dms anymore you can't even dm it <laughs> like i answered yours because you know we're friends and everything but yeah. mostly i don't answer anybody's dms anymore because even if you don't do anything, sometimes you can get in trouble. People will just lie about you, so I just don't even mess with that anymore. Mm. Uh, so, do you, do you know who Infrared is? I do not. Do? Yeah, Kev, I guess you, yeah. you're the best person. Infrared's there. a fucking mental tanker. Like, a really strange one. He shouts at people. That's what he does. He shouts at people. He also defended, uh, when I talked to him, he defended Stalin being a pedophile. That was fine. Um... Uh, what else did he? Uh, fucking imperialism and all sorts. Uh, he's got the. He's kind of weirdly like. You know how um, some people will accuse anyone on the left of being anti white, like these Nazi types? He kind of is. He kind of doesn't. He, he calls everyone who's white an angloid. And like, he, he's, he's a very strange man. Anyway, and he just angrily shouts. I haven't actually seen this at all, so. Yeah, so there's the opening uh, bit, uh, but then yeah. if you want to see him compare himself to Destiny in terms of looks. We can watch like the first minute and thirty. Oh, okay. so this is the this is the horny guy. No, no, no. This is just okay. a weird tanky. Okay, so <laughs> this, is somebody, this is not the horn dog. Somebody else. Yeah, we yeah. have a kind of running joke on the show about the tiny monkey army because he talks about that he's going to rise up and his army's going to rise up, but he's yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a, a strange convoluted meme. You'll he's see hairy. When, he you'll is see very when hairy. He, yeah, you'll get it once you watch about a minute of him. Okay, let's have a look then. Oh, the arcadum shit. I, I wasn't. I wasn't even looking at that. It's too long. I listen. It's too long. Listen, <laughs> Brilliant, I. Yeah. Then he's just reading his chat for a while. <laughs> Riveting. Excellent Riveting. live programming. <laughs> listen, I don't. Can I need? We need like a bullet point of, like, just. I can't read a. Fucking literature. I can't read a tome to fight. Like, what is going on? Just, you know what I mean? This is a guy who claims to have read, like, all of Marx. Uh, yes. Yeah. Genius level. Yeah. I mean, just state the facts and then justify the facts based on how you're stating it. Don't fucking it? write. That's what they did. Yeah. That's exactly what they it's did a, with screenshots in video and audio. Yeah, they a, nailed him. It's a twit longer. It's like it's a few paragraphs, dude. We did it on stream. <laughs> you can't be bothered to read. If I wanted to read, I'd go to school. Exactly. Five billion words. I'm sorry. I don't want to tell people how to do twit longers and shit, but it's I don't know what's going on, you know? <laughs> and I don't want to know. My story. I believe... I was forced and groomed into silence about my experience up until this point 
Recently, there's been a lot of drama circulating around one Jeremy Black, a.k.a. Glorious Arcadum. I'm going to be briefly and concisely describing my experiences involving this person. On the night of 10K Andy for D&D rub on a girl. What? December? Mm. November is the 11th, right? Fuck. On the night of November 25th, 2019, I was sexually assaulted by Arcadum in my own home. I invited, Ar I invited Arcadum to my home in the hopes to help him escape his supposed abusive household setting with his significant other. Why does Destiny's face kind of look like mine? Does anyone else see it? <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of look, look similar a little, little, little bit. Yeah, a little bit. see it. He had, like, longer hair. Looked like Destiny. Yeah, a little bit. Like, his eyes and his cheeks. Nose. Got the beard. Took advantage of me on the night of the 25th and used my emotional vulnerability to... <laughs> <laughs> Look in a mirror, you twat. Once my roommate went to bed... He has, like, the same tired eyes as me. <laughs> yeah, we're both tired. Kato asked to scratch my back and I thought you'd hair. enjoy this. He has no. the same, like, tired eyes. Tired eyes. He's you got know? my dick sucking lips. <laughs> I, I, I'd give the him a bored Birmingham, eyes. Birmingham booty call, definitely. Disheveled. I was obviously okay with this because he had. Okay, that was that was as far as I got because I couldn't go anymore because I was already in tears the first time. That, I is, watched that is pretty good. That is pretty <laughs> fucking good. Oh, goddamn. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> So, yes, uh, uh, for fuck's sake, I nearly called you Destiny again. Bollocks. That's cool. You can call me Destiny. The new and approved Destiny. Anyway, so Destiny... I was actually playing Destiny last night, but go ahead. Okay. Well, I was just going to say, Destiny, uh, do you approve of gunning down dipshit protesters? <laughs> no, please do not gun down anybody over property or any other reason. That's... I'm okay with punching Nazis. Punch all the Nazis you want to, but do not gun down protesters, please. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, oh, hang on, oh, shit, I pressed the wrong thing, that's not what I wanted to do, yeah, um, so yes, do, do you still keep in touch at all with any of the old skeptic type people, or have you been completely blackballed by them? I've been completely blacklisted, the only person that didn't blacklist me was, uh, Vadim. Oh, okay, you still uh, Everybody else has blacklisted me completely. Oh, fuck, why, why is that, do you think? Oh, because... I called them out of their bullshit when they're doing all the anti hgw stuff. And even the new lefties, they want to be, uh, they want to chase clout and get money and clicks. And so they are, have befriended all the people I called out that hate me, and they'd rather be friends with them than me, because it's mm. a, it's a click. So what you gonna do, right? True. I wouldn't say I'm missing it or anything. I just kind of do my own thing. Like what I do is better now anyway. So it's, it's yeah, all I good. agree. Yeah, and you've got a lot of support. The people show yeah. up for you. Oh yeah, people su support the shit out of me. I'm not really complaining. It's it's completely fine, you know. I, I I enjoy what I do. If it was much more bigger than it is, I probably wouldn't want to do it. Because uh, back when I was really really popular, it was annoying. So uh, I kind of like this better, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're like if you're not spending time in your DMs and like in discords and checking out what 4chan and Reddit's and trying to keep on top of what's going on kind of thing like if you just want to do what you want to do yeah it's sometimes that doesn't mesh with what is in vogue at the time yeah, you get harassed a lot too and that gets old it gets old ha having people just constantly insult you and like even when i was when i was really popular they doxed me found out where i lived threatened to come to my apartment and shit it was just and of course i got a lot of uh death threats from muslims because i did a lot of anti-muslim videos that was no fun so don't miss any of that shit, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's true. So you'll be able to live your life, enjoy it without the shit. <laughs> because yeah. you know what that's like firsthand. You know, you could chase that again if you wanted to. You clearly don't. Yeah, fame is a trap. I learned that much. I used to think, ah, oh, you want to be famous, Dusty. It's, it's an ego thing. And then you get a little taste of it, and I'm like, oh, no thanks. Hard pass. So I'm reading through the chat, Chris, though. I've... I'm seeing oh. if there are any questions. <laughs> oh, right. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. So, I, hey, 
did you have any questions for us or any things that you wanted to bring up? Because we've been like peppering you with things. Oh, since you I was just going to tell the chat. Ask me anything, chat. I'm here. Let me know what you want to know. But uh, there you go. And I think what I want to ask you guys. Mm, not really. I'm boring. I can't think of anything. So. Yeah, I put you on the spot just to kind of uh, <laughs> give the people in the chat a bit of time. And How's thinking. Germany going? You still in Germany? I am still in Germany. Germany is very nice. I mean, we still have like we don't uh, there are people who are anti restrictions and I think there's some anti vaxxers too, but they're not having a, a, an effect on the society. Like I was out today, you know, I put on my mask to go to the well, I meant to go to the kiosk, but when I got there and you know, people were queued up outside in masks. Um, they're slowly but surely getting the vaccine out. And I think there's still less than a hundred thousand people who've died from COVID um, in Germany. Have you been vaxxed? Uh, double jabbed, yes. And I guess, you know, with the Delta variant, it's, I feel now, I guess I'm not scared of dying of it as much as I was before. I mean, it's still, if I, you know, there's always a chance, right? If you do end up contracting it, but I don't feel like panic that I remember in the sort of first months. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, also the weird thing was the whole time that I've lived in Europe, I've kind of reconciled like any homesickness with the thought, I'm only just a 10 hour flight away. I mean, it would be expensive, but if something happened, you know, I've got room on my credit card, I could get home in the most 24 hours. And then they shut down the airport and I got almost claustrophobic. Like I felt trapped and then they started closing the borders. And that psychologically, like um, I noticed that feeling it was it was very weird to feel trapped. And it cut off that outlet for you. Mm-hmm. So but, is opening back up any? Yes, there they are. Um, we have a lot of restaurants that have open air seating. And so it's a lot, I think uh, we have an easier time of it than the strip mall situations or the other um, sprawl, like the Applebee's and the Olive Garden places. You know, everything is in the city, of course, and in, as well. So everything is very contracted. But you know, I don't, you just go to a shop, you put a mask on. I've never seen people bitch about masks, you know, um, and it's just normal part of life. So things are opening up and like I went and had my hair cut, but I kept my mask on the whole time. So that's just, but people seem to be How adapting. How did they do your beard then? <laughs> yes. I know that I guess there's some, someone expressed some concern about having kids in school um, and that there, there's might be some spikes coming up with kids in schools but i haven't my german's getting better but not to the point where i can read niche news articles like that so i don't want to make a completely rosy picture it's still plodding along yeah but better than here mm -hmm. more sensible yeah. definitely uh, would dusty go on with hannah reloaded to do a tag team chud watch sure i go on hannah i did she get that from me because i didn't get it from her did we just come up with that independently both Probably, yeah. Time. Look, it's convergent yeah. evolution. Yeah, yeah. convergent evolution. Because I never, you know, I don't know. But yeah, uh, now Jake, for some reason, has taken shoe on head side and decided to publicly talk shit about me, which is yeah. disappointing. Not but, fans of Jake over here. At but least Hannah, not me. Hannah's always been cool, as far as I can tell. So uh, yeah, I'd be happy to go on her program. Absolutely. Uh, do you yeah, think. Jake and I have beef. It's old beef now. Yeah. Would you, you can talk about that if you want to. Yeah, we were having oh I oh he he was condemning Milo and I brought up that back when they were doing the Bible Reloaded they floated the idea of having Milo on, and he got all defensive and angry about it. And we we're going back and forth, and he just threw out that something about um, I'm going to suck your dick or let me suck your dick. And like, why would you say that? Like, basically, I just called him out for being basically using sexism to try to dehumanize me and take the attention away from our points to a sex act. Um, in order to make me feel like embarrassed, because then he's like, "Oh, you don't like blowjobs." I was like, "You're such a prick." So yeah. that was my beef with Jake. Yeah. Edgy for the sake of edginess, just silly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah from the chat. Uh, do you think those anti-Muslim videos? I presume they mean yours, does they? Uh, contributed to the pre-alt-right anti-Muslim bigotry? Because uh, I don't know about Dusty specifically, but I think anti-theist and anti and new atheists contributed heavily to the alt-right. It's definitely possible. I've tried to uh, use my current platform to 
change that perception and to let everybody know that I'm still heavily against Islam, of course, in the same way I'm heavily against all religions. And uh, if somebody tries to spread that, it's absolutely justifiable to debate them and to uh, correct them. But to be bigoted towards somebody simply because they're Muslim or from where they're from, I absolutely disavow that in every possible way. And I've tried to, uh, you know, change that for the better. But I wouldn't be surprised if at the time that didn't contribute to that. I, I did other things that contributed to that uh, toxicity hmm. that I completely own up to. Yeah. And and regret and have tried to uh, correct. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I can ask Dusty this question, but I think I know what his answer will be. So ask Dusty what he thinks of the rise of anti-Asian hate from the pandemic. Well, I've covered that a great deal on my show. Obviously, I think I think Trump obviously uh, helped spur a great deal of that, and it's uh, just another part of racism in our country. And it's what's really disturbing about it is how much of it is uh, black folks towards Asian people. You know, there should be at least some kind of camaraderie in oppression, but they just, it doesn't seem to be the case, and it's very depressing. Yeah, I think there's something to that. Yeah. Okay, um, did we have anything else you wanted to talk about, Christy, or Dusty? Mostly, I've just been meeting, I thought having a ca chat with you would be fun, and it was. I laughed my yep. ass off. <laughs> yep. A good time was had, a good way to spend Sunday afternoon. Yeah. True. And cats, so lots of cats. Want to see more cats? There we go. Yeah, <laughs> kitty party, kitty party. Here they come. Look at that, absolutely <laughs> swamp. Who says you can't herd cats? True. Oh, no, right? They're like, stop teasing us and open it, Daddy. All right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead, go get it, go get it. It's over there. Go get it. <laughs> All right. Like, no, give it directly to me, Daddy. Okay, you can have some. Here you go, baby. There you go. Sorry, that's what I do at the end of every show. Now I do kitty parties at all my shows. So nice. Well, you guys, so you, uh, can, you guys you enjoy cats. Tune yeah. into my shows on Monday and Fridays, eight PM yeah. Central, nine Eastern give on YouTube. A, yeah, give yourself a, a plug. shout out and um, tell us about your um, the animal sanctuary and where people can help you out yeah. with that. Uh, okay, I am doing the greatest show in the history of mankind called The Dusty Smith Show uh, by Humble, Handsome Dusty Smith, and it's uh, on YouTube. Like I said, every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, uh, we basically do, I, I pick 50 topics every show, 50 to 100 topics, and I very rapidly go through the most interesting news stories of the week. So it's, I think it's un unlike, I don't know if any other podcast out there, but it's unlike most of the podcasts out there in the way that it's very rapid, very fast paced for if you have ADHD like I do. Um, it's great for that. And uh, the Animal Sanctuary is the Human Society of Animal Sanctuary. You can support it on um, Patreon if you want to or, you know, however. I don't want to beg for money. It's all good. You know, we're doing fine. So, yeah, basically, if you like the bookmark section of our show go watch dusty because dusty does all the work by himself and he's also so organized he's got all of the tabs already opened and planned whereas like we just scroll through and click shit and we're True. so scuffed that way so you speak for yourself i've got it all organized <laughs> i know what i'm doing mm -hmm. that's not that's not remotely true anyway uh yeah uh well thank you for joining us uh mr smith my pleasure thanks for having me let's do this again sometime absolutely um, yeah it was fun uh, well, and thank you, Christy, for joining me for, for yeah. this as well and being it was uh, my idea. So a call host I for the here. most. Well, yeah, but yeah. I, had to, I, I had to run the OBS, goddammit. Yeah, 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 but I, I wouldn't miss this for the world. True, it's awesome. Okay, I'm going to kick you over to uh, Thamia Sophie, um, who's doing a charity thing for, I think, the Texas abortion um, thing. I, I don't know the exact thing, but anyway, go and say hello to them. And uh, thank you all for listening and watching. Uh, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from Dusty. Say goodbye, Dusty. Goodbye, Dusty. You did the bit. And goodbye, Christy. Goodbye, Christy. You did the bit. And we...